now the latest developments in the 38 studio scandal. Rhode Island's House Speaker just returned from a meeting with two Wall Street ratings agencies. Now, the purpose of his visit was to discuss whether or not to default on bonds that financed the failed deal. And new at 6 tonight, we're hearing what he had to say about that trip. Eyewitness News reporter Mark Kennedy joins us now live outside the State House. Mattiello tells us that bond agencies in New York City now have a better understanding of where Rhode Island stands on payments concerning 38 studios. Right now, however, he's not saying what direction he's leaning towards. House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello starts Wednesday's House session with a new mindset on how to handle the 38 studios debt. He and three other lawmakers just arrived back in Providence after meeting with representatives from two major bond agencies in New York City. I think it was important that we went down to New York. Uh, it, it was a very fruitful fact-finding uh, effort. Um, it gave me a lot of perspective. It gave, it gave the leader a lot of perspective, and, and it helps us to make a determination of what our decision should be. Mariello tells us he and Majority Leader John DeSimone spoke to Moody's and Standard & Poor's about the possible consequences Rhode Island would face if lawmakers refuse to pay back $90 million the state owes to bondholders. For now, he's staying tight-lipped on what he found out. No one else in the chamber makes that decision in isolation or, or alone, so we're going to collaborate with our members and we'll come, up, we'll come up with a consensus. The state made its first 30 studios payment. The next payment for the $12.5 million is likely to continue stirring up debate until this year's budget hearings. Mattiello will tell members tomorrow in a closed door meeting what direction he's leaning towards. He tells us after that he will share with us the information. Reporting live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Mark Kennedy, Eyewitness News.